Good morning and hello YouTube. I'm super excited because today um, is my birthday, but most importantly, I get to share my testimony for the first time with everybody. Um, I want to thank my, my sister, Memory Mathis, my beautiful sister, um, for because God used her to give me the push to post my testimony. I've been wanting to post my testimony for a while. I got saved back uh, just last year. Um, let me get my date right. Last year, it was in July, July the 24th. I got saved 2019. Um, and that was like the best day of my life. That was the best day ever. But uh, I want to thank my sister because God used her to give me that push. She wanted to hear my testimony. She said, why don't you post it? And, you know, online, I always uh made sure to share my testimony on YouTube with people, you know, just even writing it out and letting them know, you know, the things that I went through. I was a victim of witchcraft. Um, and that's how I came to Christ. I was victimized, uh, by this woman that I didn't even know, never met her in my life, but it starts off with me. I was, uh, dating this man. Uh, we started dating and, um, you know, it was normal in the beginning, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, but later on, you know, things were happening, little things like that, that I would notice that I would think like it's very abnormal, but things would always break in his home. Um, he used to drive trucks for a living. So the, the trucks would just break down on him all the time. He would be stranded. They would have to go out and get him. And, and things would always, things like that was ha were happening and his truck uh, would break down. I think something went wrong in his vehicle uh, having to do with air conditioning and stuff like that. So I was like, I always thought something is up, something is going on. I just didn't know what it was. You know, we would get into little arguments here and there about just over nothing, nothing, just arguments over little things and we didn't even know how and why we were arguing about it um i started having dreams god was showing me dreams i've ever since i was little i always had dreams i was always dreaming i was always a dreamer i can still remember i can still tell you dreams that i had when i was five six seven years old and um and even when i was younger i was always able to see demons I remember um, I was getting torment. I was tormented by demons my whole life till I came to Christ. I was tormented by demons. This house we used to live in, I mean, it was horrible. Um, uh, there was a demon that would always stand. He was about six four, six four, and it was a demon. And he would always stand on the corner of my bedroom. I mean, this was every night. Um, he wouldn't do anything. He would just stare at me and put fear in me. He was, uh, he would wear a, a rounded hat with a, with a trench coat. And I, I would be so terrified every night I'd go to sleep. He was always right there. Always right there. I remember one incident when I had my, I had fell asleep with my head over my, over my bed and I looked down, something woke me up. There was that demon. I looked down and he was right in my face. You know, I just, he was right there. And I started looking up and his face was right, right in my face. I would hear things in my, in my home. I would hear, uh, we would hear footsteps. I would hear um, noises outside, like people talking, murmuring, but never could find out what they were saying. Uh, it was just always a murmur, like a, like a man and woman talking, but I could never figure out what, it, what they would say. There was always knocking on our door. They would always knock three times really loud wake everybody in the house and and nobody would be outside um i mean these demons tormented me for so long i remember one time i was in bed and these demons woke me up and they were yelling so loud in my ear that i thought i was going to go deaf yelling so loud and it sounded like when you fast forward a tape that's what their voices sounded like but um it was like so loud in my ear that I woke up yelling and screaming. I was so terrified. 
so scared. I mean, these demons always tormented me. They would, uh, they would pull my legs, pull my arms, always be laughing at, around my bedside. I would always hear them laughing around my bedside surrounding me. Uh, there was a lot of things that I saw in that house, um, in my sister's room. I would see ladies dressed in black veils and they would stand on each corner of her bed. They wouldn't say anything. They would just be with their hands down. And I remember seeing that. I was always able to see this, see into the spiritual realm. And also that demon would always be there. He would never leave. He was always there. Uh, soon later, when I moved out of my mother's house, she said she had blessed the home. She had said prayers over the home and they even lifted up her bed in the ceiling and dropped it with her in it. And she said the third day she prayed over our home that the, our windows, I mean, our doors just like a, like a gust of wind opened the doors and it shut them up, shut, shut them back up like this. And, um, and that was the last of that. But I, I lived in that home since I was little all the way till I was, I graduated high school and I moved on. And, and even then when I moved out of the house, I could still see demons. I could see demons flying in my, in my apartment. I remember there was one incident where I woke up and I saw three, it was small demons. It was about that. They were about that big. There was three of them right beside each other and they were flying. They were just flying over in, in my bedroom and I, I could see them. And um, I, I never would sleep. I could never sleep. I, I lived my whole life. It, was, it started to be normal. I, I was ready to be attacked every night. I was just waiting. I, I could feel it too before the attacks would come. I would, I would have that, that feeling, that feeling of tightness around my, my throat, around my, my chest area. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna about, I'm gonna be attacked today. It was always like that. I was always getting attacked. Um, they would do. I remember one time too. I was on my couch. I fell asleep on my couch, and these demons had me in the air. My body was lifted up in the air. Two of them were holding my arms. Two of them were holding my legs in the air. And at the time I was praying, I, I prayed in my head. I said, you have, uh, I forgot what I said. I said, you have no power over me. God, I belong to God. I belong to God. And I was just praying in my head, praying in my head. And finally my body, I could just feel it coming down, coming down, coming down, coming down. And then I was back on back in my, in my couch. There was another incident where I fell asleep. It was, I couldn't even, I'm telling you guys, I couldn't even take a nap for two minutes. I would, I was always getting attacked. I couldn't even take a nap for two minutes in my, on my couch, in my bed, anywhere, because they were always tormenting me and attacking me. And uh, one time I fell asleep and I woke up, but I couldn't move. I couldn't, I couldn't speak. That's usually how it happens when you experience paralysis. You can't move, you can't, you can't scream, you can't do anything, but you know what's going on. You're quite aware of what's going on. So I, I fell asleep. I was watching a movie and I had fell asleep. And um, out of my TV, I hear hell. I hear hell coming out of my TV. And when I mean hell, I mean screams, uh, demons growling people screaming and I was like Lord I just want to please I need I just want to be able to move I just wanted to cover my ears and and just not, I didn't want to hear that noise anymore and uh when I came out of the paralysis I was terrified I was terrified I felt this eerie feeling come over me and it lasted it lingered for about 20 minutes and usually when I when I used to get uh, attacked and be paralyzed it would only last like two minutes after or a minute after you get that eerie feeling but this lasted 20 minutes I even took a shower right before work and I could still feel that ugly eerie feeling of fear coming over my body it was horrible but Going back to that, I became a witchcraft victim just last year when I gave my life to Christ. I became a witchcraft victim. And uh, like I said, I was dating that guy and God was starting to give me dreams. 
and I've always had dreams. I just never understood dreams. I never, I never understood it. I said, God, I have so many dreams. I just don't know what they mean. I don't know. You know, I, I was lost. I didn't know anything about that. And so God was giving me dreams. I had a dream. My very first dream, I believe it was, uh, I was in a desert. I was in the middle of a desert and it was, it was dark. It was dark outside. And, um, there was two tree stumps going all the way to the sky. I remember, I mean, they were, they were going all the way to the sky and in the very top, in the very, very top of the tree trunks, there was a huge spider web. It was so big, like it stretched out and it looked like it's covered the whole sky. And I was like, wow. And in the middle of the, uh, in the middle of that web that covered the whole sky was a spider. It was huge. It was big. It looked like it was covering the whole sky. And I, and then that was that dream. And I was like, wow, Lord, you know, what could it be? I just, I was like, there's, I know there's something behind those dreams. And I was still dating him. We were still dating. And then I, what was the other dream? I was having snake dreams. I had a, I had a dream of a snake in my bed. I had a dream of a snake in my bed. And the snake was, I think it was like a cobra. If I, I don't remember what kind of snake it was, but I think it was like a cobra. And it just kept hissing, hissing at me and trying to bite me. But I had my sheets and I kept covering my face because it was just, it seemed really, really mad. That, that snake seemed really mad. It just kept trying to strike, kept trying to strike at me. And so I remember that dream. So then come July, I think it was July the 4th, we got in, me and my ex got into a, 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 a argument over the phone through text message and it just escalated. And after that day, I was like, you know what? I don't need this. I, I had it, and, you know, and, and not understanding that he was also a victim of witchcraft. And I, I became victimized. Basically I was in, in, in the middle of the crossfire. So, um, yeah, so then I break up with him that, that July, July 4th, I break up with him and, um, uh, July 4th, I break up with him. Uh, a few days later, a few days later, um, I was like, it came to me and I was like, I wonder, I was like, Lord, I wonder if it's witchcraft. Is this witchcraft that's going on? And that's the last thing on my mind. You know, you don't want to think that, you know, that, that it's witchcraft. But I believed in witchcraft. I know, I experienced, I have so much to tell, but I've experienced that too before I even knew a lot about witchcraft, right? So I text him and I told him, I think someone is doing something to you and I was like, I think it's witchcraft. So then he texts back. Um, he said, well, who do you think it is? And prior to that, God had given me another dream. And this dream really let me know that it was his, his ex baby's mother, right? He had a five-year-old with the five-year-old with this woman. And in my dream, the little girl, her little girl was in my dream, Okay, the little girl was holding a rattlesnake with his head already chopped off. His head was cut off, but that snake was wiggling in the air at why this little girl was holding him, holding the snake. And they had the snake, the snake's head was cut off already. So that let me know God had already given, God had already given me the victory over that, over that witchcraft, over witchcraft, over that power. But in my dream, I didn't, I didn't know yet. So I had that dream and I remember telling her in my dream, the little girl, I said, drop the snake. It's going to bite you. It's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you. But the snake had no head. And so that was that dream. When I had that dream, that's when I knew that it was his baby's mother doing witchcraft. Okay. So prior to this, uh, I forgot to tell you guys. This was when we were first dating too. I had got in a car accident, not knowing that this witch is the one that caused it. And the reason I say that was because I've kept the paper where you find you file the report of, of how it happened. And the lady's name that that 
that I collided with, the lady's name was the same name as that witch, as the witch. It was crazy. I was like, wow. But see, that that is which that's how they work. You know, and I think she wanted me to know, like, look, this is me. This is me. And I'm the one doing this. What are you going to do? You can't do anything about it. Right. So it was kind of like a taunt, like a like a like, you know, kind of like a uh, how would I say it? Basically, just being like, OK, what are you going to do about it? You know what I mean? I, I'm letting you know it's me. But at the time, I had no idea. So this is going on. This is all going on. So then finally, I mean, I let him know after I, I told him, I said, I think it's your baby's mother uh, doing that. After that, I mean, everything was just, it went downhill from there. Um, I mean, this woman was trying to make me lose my job. I was trying to make me lose my job. I mean, you name it, like she was, that's what she was trying to do trying to lose my, I was, it, everything, my bills were piling up. I don't even know how. I was still working, but my bills were piling up. I couldn't afford to pay anything. Like, I was like, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. After that, the witchcraft got real heavy. I was finding black spiders in my home. And the weird thing is, too, there was a black widow spider outside of my window that would not leave. It was just always there. And I was, I thought that was a little weird. I was like, why is that spider just there? It doesn't move. It was a black widow right outside my my door. Also, too, one day when I came home from work, there was a silver spider. I mean, a silver snake. Really, you don't, there's no, I don't even think there's any such thing as silver snakes. It looked like a foil, like the color of foil. And so it was slithering in front of my doorstep. And I'm like, I never see snakes over here. You know, I, you don't see snakes. I live in San Antonio, Texas. Of course there's snakes, but not, not where I live. I live in an apartment building. You don't just go out there and find snakes. So I was like putting all these together. I was like, Lord, I don't know what's going on. I was finding black spiders, random black spiders in my walls. And I remember uh, one time I was praying and the Holy Spirit, well, I was asleep. The Holy Spirit told me to get up and pray. So I just, I, I didn't know what I was praying. I said, okay. And I fell to my knees and I was just praying. And the Holy Spirit led me to come into my living room. And sure enough, there was a black spider. I was, I was they told me, it, my, the Holy Spirit told me to come to the, uh, to adjust my thermostat. So I did that. And when I did that, the thermostat shifted. And when it shifted, a black spider came out. There's no way that my, thermostat could shift you can't even move it it's it's literally it's stuck to the uh tucked to, stuck to the wall so I said wow okay lord you know so um that happened so a lot all of this stuff was going on um I couldn't sleep I couldn't eat I was depressed I I was very depressed I was sad I was heartbroken you know, me and this man were talking about getting married. We were talking about our future together. Um, I thought he was a man of God. I thought he had faith. Um, and, you know, that's what attracted me to him from the beginning. You know, we talked about God and, and things like that. But, you know, his faith wasn't there. And, and I'm not going to lie. You know, I wasn't at the time I wasn't saved either. But we knew about God. I, I just wasn't living right he wasn't living right we were still drinking we were doing this and we were doing that sleeping together and things like that and so yeah it was just it wasn't it wasn't the right way to do things and so we were both living in sin and stuff like that and that's how this witch had a foothold that's how she was able to curse throw curses at me she was sending warlocks to my job to put curses on me I knew it because the Holy Spirit was was letting me know this is a witch this is a warlock they're coming and and that was I, I'm a hairstylist so I was doing their hair and she would be sending these witches and warlocks I remember one time I was at uh at, at the Walmart and I had my purse with me it's a leather purse and me not knowing you know I'm a friendly person I'm a friend. I'm a very friendly person. So when somebody approaches me, I talk to them or like, they're like, hi, how are you? I'm like, hi, I'm doing good. So I was at the store and this man comes, comes to me and she says, oh, what a nice purse. Can I touch it? 
and me not knowing, I just did it. It didn't cross my mind. You know, I didn't cross my mind. And he was like, can I touch it? I said, oh, sure. You know, you can touch it. And he touches my purse. Not, and then it didn't hit me till I hit, got home. I drove home and I'm like, wait a minute. I said, that man was sent by that witch to put a curse on me, on my finances, on, you know, it was, it was contact. So once he touched my purse, you know what I mean? That was me giving him the, I told him, yes, that was me saying, Hey, I, you can touch my purse. So yeah, he was trying to put a curse on me. And so then everything was just going crazy. I, 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 I was by myself in this fight. My, my, my family didn't really understand what I was going through. I mean, my mom, she, I, you know, she, they, nobody knew the full extent. And I was going through this by myself with, with God, you know, God, God was with me, but I felt alone. I felt like I was like, what am I going to do? God, I don't even know how to fight this witchcraft. I have no clue how to even fight, how to begin, how to start. I have no idea. I was so stressed. I wouldn't eat. I was just, I couldn't sleep. I, it was horrible. And I remember I, I've been drinking since I was 15. That was one thing I was like, Lord, I can't let this go. I, I like drinking. I enjoy drinking that re relaxes me. It calms me down. And I remember the night before I even gave my life to Christ, I went out to the bar and I was, I, I was just like, I need to get my mind off of it. I was home alone. I was home alone this whole time. And, um, I just like, I, I was, I needed to get away. So I went and got, had some drinks. I came home later that night and I cried. I, I was here in my living room and I cried out to God and I was, I fell on my knees and I was crying and I said, Lord, I can't take this. I can't take this anymore. I need you. I said, help me fight this thing. Help me fight this thing, Father God. I fell on my knees and I was crying. And I um, I told him, I said, Lord, I'm not looking to my right. I'm not looking to my left. I'm just looking straight at you. I'm running to you, Lord. I'm running. I give you everything. I give up. Like this witchcraft is just taking over my life. This witchcraft is taking over my life, and I just need you, Lord. Please, I give you all of me. I give you my heart. I give you everything. Just help me. And that night, that night, I felt all my chains breaking off, everything. My chains breaking off my hands and my feet. And, and that morning, I was free from, I was drinking alcohol since I was 15, I was taking sleeping pills because I was tormented by demons my whole life. I was tormented. I couldn't even sleep. I never knew what peace was when I, I never knew what peace was. I didn't know because I never had it until I came to Christ. I never had it. And on top of this witchcraft, it was even more like I couldn't sleep. I just, I, w I wasn't able to, I was taking pills. I got addicted to Xanax when I was younger because that was the only thing that would help me sleep. I had to detox myself off of Xanax. I was taking uppers and downers because I wanted to be up. I hated the nighttime. I hated being asleep. I hated it. So I would take, I would take cocaine. I would take, uh, I would do meth to keep me up. And then I would take downers so I could pass out. And, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know if I was getting tormented that night or not, or, you know, I was just, so I could be numb to it. And I was, ever since I was 15, I was drinking, uh, drinking until I hit until I came to Christ just last year, I was drinking. And that day I felt those chains breaking off. And that was the beginning. <laughs> that was the beginning of, of my walk with Christ. That was my beginning. And I was like, wow, Lord, wow. That day, it was just like a split second. I could, I was able to sleep. I wasn't stressed. I even though I was going through the witchcraft stuff, I wasn't I wasn't stressed. I could sleep. I said, "Wow, Lord." In that split second, it was crazy. I've never experienced that before. 
I didn't even want any alcohol. And I've been I've been clean since then. I mean, once who the sun sets free is free indeed. And he set me free from everything, from insomnia, from drugs, from everything. He set me free just in that split second. So the next day, I think it was the next day, he led me to, that's when he started beginning to work. God started beginning to work and using the Holy Spirit. Once I gave everything to him, I gave him everything. I said, Lord, take, take everything I have. And, um, and he, um, led me to armed and dangerous, the book called armed and dangerous. He led me to that book. He led me to that book. So I ordered it. I was like, oh, I can't wait to get it in. I ordered it. And as soon as that book came in, oh my God, oh my goodness. I grabbed that book. I opened it. I read it from the front to the back in a day. And they had so many warfare prayers pertaining to witchcraft, a self-deliverance prayer. After that, it was game over. I was like, thank you, Father. This is what I needed. This right here is my weapon. These prayers are my weapon. Your word is my weapon. So I I got that book. I remember I fell to my knees and I opened it and I was reading those prayers. I kept reading those prayers and reading them with tears coming down my eyes. The book was full of tears and I was just yelling those prayers out, yelling top of my lungs. I was yelling them. That's how much I was just ready, ready to fight back. I, I and and I don't like being victimized. Never have I experienced that, where you have no control over anything. That that person, that wicked person, is the one that's controlling everything around you. Your life your job, everything. They have control. But the devil is a lie. The devil is a liar. I took my control back. My God gave me control back. So I I was praying and I could feel it. Something was going on in the spiritual realm and I could feel it. And I was like, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, because this book, it was the jump start to my fight to my fight against witchcraft after that god kept leading me to more and more people he led me to minister ewing and that's when i started beginning to understand why i was having these dreams since i was a child till now why i was going through the, these attacks as a child because there was a legal right my my fam somewhere along my bloodline my family were worshiping marine spirits i was having snake dreams as a child as a little kid and these were reoccurring dreams this was through my whole life reoccurring dreams of of spy of uh not spiders of crocodiles of snakes i always had dreams of serpents dreams of serpents all the time it was real curing real curing dreams and i was like lord and i was having these sexual dreams as a kid and these these sexual dreams were of other women and and i was so young i didn't even know what we didn't even know what gay was or lesbian was in in my era i you know and and i was a child so i never even knew what gay was or anything like that lesbian and I was having these dreams and I never understood them. And so when God led me to minister Ewing's videos, I said, wow, wow. So God, I mean, God was downloading so much information and, and leading me to so many different videos and different ministers. And I thank God for minister Ewing. I thank God for, uh, um, Juan Ramirez, I thank God for these pastors, for Minister Whitfield, Harrington, man, his videos are so full of knowledge. And so when I ran into Kevin Ewing's videos, it was game over from there. I mean, I started understanding my dreams, what, dr why I was having these sexual dreams, why I was having these snake dreams. And then be God began to show me and tell me 
your ancestors have worshipped marine spirits that's why i've been having dreams of 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 serpents since i was a child and even though I, i i didn't live in sin as a child you don't know any better you don't live in sin you don't you don't sin you know what i mean i was seven eight years old six years old and um i was like no wonder it makes so much sense so i started fighting against marine witchcraft i mean marine altars i started oh my my uh god showed me as well that i had a generational curse on my father's side he was telling me look uh your father died your father died at age 30 something your mother i mean his mother my grandma died at a young age his only sister had died at a young age my grandfather which was my dad's dad he died so i was the only one left i was the only one left and god god was i'm gonna use you to break that generational curse off your father's side and you're gonna and you're gonna live and you're gonna live and you're gonna i'm gonna make you a warrior and he and that's what it was ever since i was little and i was getting attacks i was always asking why why am i why do i why do i see demons why are they torturing me why do they come beside my bedside and torture me and they don't leave me alone they they're always right there why do i see this why do i see demons where i go it was just crazy and i'm like you know when as i got older like i think i was 1920 i said um i'm not gonna pray i'm not gonna pray anymore because god don't hear me i'm not gonna i don't want anything to do with god because he doesn't hear me i'm not worthy of him hearing me anyway that's how i felt so i went a long time without god i was just on drugs i was on out al- al- drugs and alcohol that's it that's it that's how i could cope every day drugs alcohol and going out going out all the time and not knowing that god had a per- god God's purpose for me was to make me a warrior. So uh, since I was little, all through just recently, when I gave my life to Christ, I was going through all this. I was getting tormented and things like that. And and that was because God had a bigger plan. He was making me tough. He was making, making me cross through the fire to strengthen me, to strengthen me and to be able to overcome all of this stuff. I don't think I would I was I would have been able to overcome witchcraft if I wouldn't have gone through what I went through. But it was um it was crazy and yeah, so God was downloading all this stuff and I was fighting against I I was praying and I was fighting against marine with marine spirits. I was fighting against witchcraft. I was fight, fighting against generational curses. I was fighting against um uh generational demons so i started fighting i started saying warfare prayers that i found on um, minister joshua's page i started finding warfare prayers uh having to do with what i was going through to break curses to to break uh uh faulty foundation foundations to break i mean just everything everything that god was showing me i was using those prayers i was fasting I was praying. I mean, I think I spent a, in my prayer closet. I was more in my prayer closet than anything. And um, I started, I began to fast. Uh, God showed me as well the type of witchcraft that witch was using. I remember one time I rolled out of bed. It was early in the morning. And God just told me to uh, get on my phone and Google a cobweb witchcraft. And, I, you know, because I was dr- having dreaming of, I was dreaming of spiders and webs and stuff like that. And God said, just uh, Google cobweb witchcraft. And that's exactly what I did. I Googled cobweb witchcraft and a prayer came up. It was like over a hundred prayer points to fight against cobweb witchcraft. And I'm telling you, I said that prayer daily, every single day. And I even, I was even at the time praying for my ex. I was praying for him you know because he was a victim of witchcraft he was more um i think manipulated uh i wouldn't say manipulated uh he was more i guess blinded they had that witch had scales on his eyes uh you know 
scales on his eyes. And so I, I was praying over him and I just kept praying over him. I, I was praying for me and I would include him in my prayers. Every time I would say that prayer, I would include him in my prayer. And I just kept saying that prayer and kept saying that prayer. And after that, I was just seeing results. I was seeing results. Those spiders disappeared. That black widow was gone. Um, my dreams. So in my dreams, the spiders kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Even the webs, the webs kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And I just kept fighting and I just kept fighting. And I just kept saying prayer points on, on this, on cobweb witchcraft, prayer points against altars, wicked altars. Um, I was waking up staying up sometimes till one o'clock two o'clock in the morning saying warfare prayers throughout the throughout the night that had to do pertain with what I was going through you know what God was showing me and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead me and um to see what I needed to pray against so that's what I was doing and I was just in prayer and fasting had no clue oh my gosh I had no clue that I had demons I guess because I, I didn't know at the time that drugs were an, a gateway. Um, alcohol was a gateway. Having sex with others was a gateway. I had no idea of these things. I never wasn't, I, I you know, I didn't do witchcraft. I didn't, I wasn't into stuff like that. You know, I was just into drugs and thing and, and drinking and, and partying and having a good time and things like that. And I had no idea that those were open doors. And I had no idea that I had over seven demons inside. So I kept praying. I kept, I mean, I kept fasting. Um, soon, soon later, I mean, later on, I found a, a my brother, which shout outs to my brother, Timothy from New York. I actually found him on YouTube. I found him on YouTube or actually we found each other on YouTube. We commented uh, on this, uh, an, on a video and we, we both saw our comments and we were commenting back and forth. He also was a victim of witchcraft. So, and he was a dreamer. And so I, you know, that was all God bringing us together. And when I told him my story and he told me his, it, I mean, it was so much similarities. And I said, wow, wow. I said, brother, I have never talked to anybody that understood or understands what I'm going through with my dreams with this witchcraft with everything that I'm fighting I was just fighting it was a war, blown out war and he had already been through he had God had already given him the victory over the witch that he, you know did witchcraft on him over witchcraft and when we got together I'm telling you it was a force to be reckoned with he was a warrior and I became a warrior God was uh, God had already been uh you know, preparing me. And I had no idea, you know, I had no idea that's what he was doing. So he was just preparing me to be a warrior. And so me and my brother, Timothy, now we fast together. We pray together. I'm telling you, we shake up the kingdom of darkness. Every chance we get, we pray over, uh, against witchcraft. Uh, we pray for victims of witchcraft too. We keep them in our prayers and we're able to see our dreams too. God reveals dreams to us of other people, of other victims so that we can pray for them. And I was just like, Lord, this is amazing. I finally have a brother in Christ that understands what I'm going, where I, what I was going through, understands, um, my wife walk with you. And after that, it was game over. We, and still at, still to this day, we war akin against the kingdom of darkness. Um, I mean, these demons flee, not because of us, but because of the power of God, they flee. I mean, you should see how quick they flee in our dreams. I mean, at first they were coming at me. I'm talking about, they had an army after me they, my brother could tell you, they had a full blown army with tanks coming after me in the spiritual realm in the spiritual trying to take me out. But praise the Lord. God did not allow that. God did not allow that because God said, you will not touch this one. I have a plan for her and she's going to help others that are going through witchcraft, that are witchcraft victims. And that's what we do. Me and my brother, Timothy, we do that. Shout outs to my brother, Timothy in New York, Kingston, New York. Um, I love you, brother. But yes, yeah, so now I'm a warrior for the kingdom, for God's kingdom. 
I, I stand in the front lines. I wage war against principalities. I wage war against um, demonic forces. We send the, you know what? God sends his assigned angels to wage war against these principalities in the name of Jesus. And I just want to thank, uh, thank God for everything. I mean, he has showed me so much in such a little bit, sh uh, a short time. He has shown me so much and downloaded so much information. And I want to thank ministers like Kevin Ewing out there that are leading God's people into all truths, that are leading God's people, that are filling them with wisdom and, and knowledge of, of these things so that we can fight back and stop being victims. It's, t it's time to fight back. Stop being a victim. Stop being a victim. Put in the work. And God, I'm telling you, live righteously repent of your sins every day give everything you have to god and i'm telling you he will take everything away everything i was tormented for 30 something years over 30 years torment i couldn't sleep for that i mean it was non-stop non-stop for me and i you, my brother could even tell you i said brother I, i'm telling you this is funny but i'm not even used to this <laughs> i said i am not used to being able to sleep with no pills no nothing i was able to sleep like a newborn baby um i am so grateful to god i'm so happy to be here i'm i'm happy to be sharing my testimony with so many I mean, I was a victim of witchcraft. I had generational curses. I, you know, there was just, I was attacked all the time and God freed me from all demonic attacks, paralysis. He freed me from everything. I mean, in a split second, that's how it happened for me though. You know, and I know a lot of people, everybody's testimony is so different. But with me, it was in a split second. God just took it. I took it all. He said, I'm taking everything. I'm taking it all. And in that split second, I just felt it. I felt it. I felt freed. I felt freed. And that's how it is. When you come to God, you feel so free. It's like a, it's like chains have been, and that's exactly what's happening in the spiritual realm. Those chains have to come off. You know, when you give your life to Christ, them chains come off. You know, and I, I hope I encourage somebody to keep going, keep praying, stay praying, stay fasting, because, you know, I didn't even know I had eight demons. And recently I just threw up another one and I was I, I, and I'm constantly fasting. So see, these demons are dormant. They're dormant in your in your in your body, in your temple for so long that they refuse to come out. But through prayer and fasting, praise the Lord, they have to, they have to go, they have to get out in the name of Jesus. You got to fight back. Your temple belongs to God, not to these demons. So fight back, stop being a victim, you know, and it's time for us to, to, to be warriors, to be warriors for Christ. And that's exactly what I am. I'm a sniper for Christ. I'm a warrior for Christ. You know, I, I drop bombs over the kingdom of darkness daily. Me and my brother, we drop bombs. We are not nice. We do not play nice with these demons. We do not come to play nice. I mean, this is a flat out war. It's warfare. That's why it's called warfare. And there's a spiritual battle right now going on. There is a big spiritual battle. There has always been a spiritual battle going on between God and and between Satan and these demons, you know, and God gives us the authority. Now I walk in my authority. Now I know what my authority is. I am, I, I no longer fear no demon, you know, I no longer feel, fear no demon. I fear no witch. I fear no warlock in the name of Jesus. God has given us power and authority over all the powers of kingdom of darkness. Okay. So brothers and sisters, and just anyone out there, if you are battling witchcraft, turn to God, he will lead you. I'm telling you, it will be, it will be the best thing that you will ever do in your life. And you will be thinking, why did I wait so long to come to you, Lord? Why, why did I keep running from you, God, when all you did was love me? All you did was love me. You died. You sent your son to die for me. Why would I run away from that, from your love, 
from your goodness, from your mercy, from from your kindness, from your gentleness. He's so gentle. Once you get to know God, he's so loving, so gentle. He loves you so much. He loves you. He loves you. I'm telling you, the devil does not love you. The devil does not care. The devil will turn against you in a heartbeat. He was never on your side. Come to the winning side. Come to God's side because in the end, guess what? We win. We win. Do not lose your crown. Do not lose your crown for nobody. They're not fighting for you. God's fighting for you. God has your back. He's a powerful, all-knowing God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the creator of all. The one that breathed into your nostrils and gave you life. That's who, that's the God I serve. The God that just embraces you with your love, with his love. But he's also a God of war. He's a God of war. He's a God of wrath. And you don't want to be on God's bad side either. You don't want to be, you don't want to. You don't want to be on God's bad side, especially when it comes to the end of times and 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 um, and when it comes to God judging the world. You don't want to be on that side. You don't want to be on that side. You don't want to be condemned to hell and God tell you, depart from me. I never knew you. So come to God today. Come to him. And I'm telling you, your life, your life will turn around. Your life will be amazing. God has your back and you will be able to to live in live out your purpose and your destiny in your life. You'll be able to live it out. But yes, brothers and sisters, I love y'all and I just pray and hope that this testimony reaches so many that are victimized that are victims of witchcraft and you have no hope and you feel like what am I going to do? How am I going to fight this thing? I'm telling you guys, I was there. I was so lost. I didn't know how to fight. I didn't know how to fight back using spiritual warfare prayers. You have to really target what you're going through. If you are going through witchcraft, you better target witchcraft. You better target those witchcraft spirits. You better target those altars. You know what I mean? This is not a game. These witches and these warlocks are not playing games with your life. These demons, they don't care what color you are, what race you are, woman, man, they don't care. They will come and try to destroy you and turn your life upside down. They will take your life. They will take your life if you do not just turn to God. All right, brothers and sisters, love y'all. I hope this reaches so many. Bye. God bless. Shalom, shalom, shalom.